Hello, my name is Lance Ash, and we're going to go rambling. As soon as the car tells me it's ready to go, I'll turn the air conditioning off. Ooh, that helped it, or did something anyway. Mm. Turn this down a little bit. I didn't really have a chance to come up with any topics, but I think I have plenty of stuff to talk about. Um, let's start off with this. My wife has had a woodcut print hanging up in the dining room for some time. Never really paid much attention to it, but it caught my eye a couple days ago. It's um, a picture of some flowers in a vase. And looked at the signature, Olivia S. Cavo, 1968. So, um, looked the name up. And, um, okay, we're ready to go now. Anyway, I found out, I found someone by that name and sent her a. I think I sent, sent her a, a message through Pinterest, I'm not sure. Anyway, I said, are you the person who, who did the print? And she said, yes, yes, uh, how'd you come by it? And I told her, I, my wife picked it up somewhere in the Athens area. And um, so she said, um, yeah, I took a printmaking class at the University of Pittsburgh under George Nama, who is a who is an established printmaker and was still alive as of 2005 because we saw some of his work from that year. So uh, she said, can you send me a picture of it? So we did through Pinterest. And um, just very interesting. The, the strange that you can, what you can do through the internet, find people that you don't know really and get in contact with them. Um, very strange, weird feeling to get in contact with somebody. You know, speaking of which, I've been thinking about, I, I need to find out if it's possible if they still have old-fashioned uh, pen pals. I'm sure they do, you know, with actual letter writing. I want to find somebody in Germany and send them a, get in, you know, sort of letter writing relationship. Uh, speaking of Germany, what about these accusations against Till Lindemann from Ramstein? Ugh, hope it's not true. Hope it's certainly hope it's not true to the extent that it's been made out. I hope no crimes were committed. I hope it doesn't lead to the breakup of, of Ramstein. Mm. Let's see what else has happened. Uh, I had a three-day weekend because. Uh, Friday was Juneteenth, which is a holiday at the post office. And if a person like me with a seniority doesn't sign up for it, then they usually give you the, the, the day off. Um, I used to sign up for every single holiday, but my wife has ordered me to not do that anymore so I can take as much time off as possible. And so I had a three-day weekend, and I got some work done. Something is rattling in the back seat. Um, <clears throat> what? That's gonna drive me crazy until I figure out what the hell that is. Um, let's see what else is going on. Uh, oh God, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't want any any dead air because I'm thinking. Uh, the, YouTube sent me an uh, email saying, you know, you can turn your your videos into, into podcasts. And I didn't have time to mess with it this weekend. I'm looking into doing that. So start posting them as videos and as podcasts, which is what they really are anyway, because then I don't have a, a camera. And I'm not going to buy one. God, my head is throbbing. I had a headache all weekend. Oh dear, I ate so much in the past 15, 16 hours. 
was Father's Day on Sunday and I got cards from my wife and the kids. My daughter lives on her own now and she drove by specifically just to drop off a card for me, which I thought was sweet. Um, researching um, illustrators, artists, there's just so much to discover. Um, there's a well-known illustrator named Lane Smith. He did the illustrations for the Sneaky Cheese Man and um, the true story of the, of the Three Pigs. And um, anyway, um, I've always liked his work, but um, I got into him r recently because I don't know how this popped up, but this book called I'm No Good at Rhyming and Other Poems is um, it's a book of poems for kids and um, he did the illustrations but they're nothing like the ones he did for the Stinky Cheese Man and um, they're really retro they have this 50's feel and so I started looking those up and then the other illustrations came up I thought oh it's that guy so um, I started looking at the the variety of stuff he's done. Also, YouTube recommended some music video to me, and the picture of the album or whatever that it was connected with is very similar to the guy who did um, the, um, what you call it, the cover for um, Built the Spills album, You in Reverse, Mike Shear. So uh, I knew immediately who it was, so I started looking his stuff up again, but he is so depressing to look at because the work is just so complex and detailed and un it's, it's un unfath is it unfathomable or infathomable how he does it? It certainly uh, inspired me to put some extra detail into the the negative space around my figures and my latest drawings. Let's see what else is going on. Listen to Peep Show a lot while I was painting and drawing this weekend. Poured down rain today. It's terrifying. Terrifying thinking about what's happening at my old studio where I store all my old paintings. Because there's so many holes in the roof. I, 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 I'm scared to go over there and look and see what's going on. There's no telling how many paintings have been ruined over there by sitting in puddles of water for years. And some of them are good work. Mm. All right, let's see what's in the, in the um, CD bag. Rush, Fly By Night. Rush, Caress of Steel. Built to Spill, Perfect From Now On. Uh, High on Fire, De Vermis Mysterious. Cheap Trick, Heaven Tonight. Cheap Trick, Dream Police. I think that's the one I first one I ever owned on used cassette. Uh, Brand X, what's the name of this record? Unorthodox Behavior. High on Fire, The Art of Self Defense, that's their first one. Wayne Shorter, Speak No Evil, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Something made me think of Rush this weekend, and I thought, you know, you really ought to listen to all their records. Go, you just start. But the idea of starting with the first one just I, didn't appeal to me. The first one is with a different drummer, and it's a totally different uh, thing from what they did later on. It's interesting, my son likes them. 
I've tried to get him into heavy music, but the appeal for Rush to him is more the lyrical side than, than the music, really, I think. Although I don't know. He surprises me sometimes with stuff. I'll, I'll play stuff for him, and he likes it. I'm shocked. Um, we listened to a lot of the Rolling Stone Steel Wheels album, and I was, I was stunned how much of it he liked. I didn't think it'd be his kind of thing. I'll always remember he got, um, he likes They Might Be Giants. He got whatever album it is that has Whistling in the Dark. Um, we uh, brought it home and he put it on for the first time and that song came on the first time and he was, that, that look of joy in his face, that delight, this, this is great, you know. A friend of mine sent me uh, a song by Joe Tex. I think I heard the name, maybe, but that's, if I did, it was just in passing years ago. Um, the song was Bad Foot, Bad Feet, sorry. And um, so I looked him up. He was a big rival of um, James Brown. Which is odd, because it doesn't seem like the music is all that similar. Some people claim that James Brown stole his dance moves from Joe Tex. Which is interesting, because Mick Jagger stole a lot of his moves from James Brown. Stones went on tour with James Brown in the mid 60s, probably 65, maybe. And suppose the story goes that when James Brown Brown was on stage, Mick would be in the in the wings watching him, studying everything he did. And ever after that, he he moved differently on stage. I don't get all that. I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm a purist. I think that a musical performance should be a musical performance. I don't, I don't get all the, the choreographed moves and, you know, fancy lights and props and all this other shit. I think you should dress... Basically, the way that you normally dress on stage. I don't think you should have costumes and stuff. <clears throat> Speaking of which, um, last week I listened to the Almond Brothers a little bit. I have a couple of their records. And uh, they're all right. Not really, not really my thing, but they're okay. Anyway, um, looked up some pictures of them. I love that idea that, um, you know, a band around 72 or so, and they're all wearing bell bottoms. They all have mustaches or beards, and they all have hats on. <laughs> uh, for some reason, I think that's the reason that I um, looked up the, the Muppet band, Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. Apparently they have a show on the, uh, unto themselves now with some human sidekick. That's what ruined the lone gunman, by the way. Throw in an extra person. If, if the Electric Mayhem was real, they'd be just the perfect band. A little heavier too. Mm. I need to get a poster of them. I don't know where I'd put it though. I have no wall space. 
our walls are completely covered with either books or stuff we've already hung up. I need to redo my studio, the playroom. What I really want to do is rip the carpet up. I could make a mess. I can't believe she stopped for me. Wow. Well, let's see what else is going on. I don't think I went anywhere this weekend. I did. I went to um, there's a little free library <coughs> near the Publix <coughs> that's closest to us and I got some stuff what was it? Oh, I got a, a college yearbook from 1969 very odd All, all the, the student pictures, all the girls are wearing the same dress. The guys were allowed to wear different things, but the girls all had to wear the same dress? That's odd. Sixty-nine. Different world. I, try, I, I was so into hippie aesthetics over the weekend. I tried to find some documentaries on hippies, but none of them were any good. I don't know. It's so hard to find what you want. found some contemporary documentaries where people take this condescending attitude towards them. They call it free love. Mm. Verge of a headache. That's right. Past me. I'm sorry I got in front of you, but that's the way life is. I need a solid week off. Mm. I had some stuff written down now that I think about it, but it's not on this not on this card. Get the damn thing out. No. I decided to change up my reading plan a little bit. The German part of the reading plan stays the same. Pick two, maybe three books and just read them over and over until you're sick of them. But the English part, <clears throat> I'm changing. Because the English reading is mostly bedside reading. And um, number one, I'm going to focus more on like comic novels and uh, just light novels, fun things. Um, but also, I'm going to allow myself to skim books. I got some books by Edward T. Hall, who's an anthropologist, years ago. And um, I just, I'm allowing myself to just thumb through them, not read every word. Hmm. 
Right now, uh, I'm reading a book by Joseph Connolly, his first book, Poor Souls, from 95. And um, it's supposed to be so funny. All the blurbs on the on the jacket say, oh, it's a really funny comic novel. It's not really funny at all, unless you find people doing dumb, self-destructive things funny. Everybody in the book is a big drunk, and they're all cheating on each other. I'm not feeling too well at the moment. Everything will be all right. Let's see here. All right, we're going to call it quits in a second. I'll be honest with you, I'm having an aura, which can indicate pre-seizure activity. Weird, tingly feeling. I'll be alright. It's going away. I wish something magical would happen. Some mighty stroke of good luck would descend on upon me. Out of the blue. Alright, see you next time.